Hey, I'm Zach McDonald, your real estate agent with Real Property Associates. And in today's video, I wanna talk about 17, I'm going to share with you 17 tips to help you get your house prepared for the winter. And some of these are tips that I've kinda of learned the hard way, and some of these are just good common sense maintenance tips for prepping your house and also maintaining it through the winter months. So without further ado, let's jump in. So the first one I've got is weather stripping. Make sure that around the outside of your doors that are going to the exterior, right? So like your front door, garage door, back door, um, as applicable, make sure that there's appropriate weather stripping around there so that you don't get that gust of cold air in. There was a, <laughs> there was a house that I showed to some clients that was on a busier road and this house didn't have weather stripping and it's amazing just how much louder it was as well. So not only was it getting, uh, it was actually in the summertime, so not only was a lot of hot air getting in there, but we also just observed how loud it was. And just even that also does a good job of insulating. So if you're on a busier road, it should also help with the sound as well. Uh, number two, make sure to get your chimney inspected and as necessary, get it cleaned or swept out by a professional. I have a, personal story on this one as well. Last year, I you know, was all excited to get the fire going in the house and we didn't know that the downstairs chimney had a, or the downstairs fireplace insert had a um, failed seal. And so what happened is we were getting smoke coming out and then it was bouncing off the chimney cap and actually going down into the uh, downstairs. So we were getting smoke downstairs from our fireplace. So something like that, it's not a very difficult fix, but if you don't know, you don't know. So make sure that you have somebody, or if you know, make sure you check all those things to make sure that you're not getting smoke into your house. The, the next thing, this is another chimney related thing. So number three is check uh, your damper. If you leave it open when you're not running a fire, then you're gonna be letting cold air potentially, or warm air in and out of the house. So make sure you close that after your fires died down. I need to actually implement that one myself, but it is common sense, I do know that. Um, have your furnace or heating system serviced. So it's recommended that at least every year you have somebody come out and service the furnace and inspect it. That, that's gonna go with changing your, your filters. You should change those out a few more times uh, during the year, a little more frequently, but definitely make sure you have somebody take a look at that. If there's little problems, it's, it's always cheaper. I found the maintenance is always cheaper if you do it over time and take care of your systems rather than waiting until there's a problem. It typically costs more and can cause more damage. So that's a definitely a, a plus. Plus you don't wanna run out of heat in the winter time. And another personal story, I mean, I'm just front loading all these stories. I, last year, didn't check the oil levels and I think it was January on one of the colder days of the year, all of a sudden my furnace makes a huge loud coughing sound and it, it sounds like there was an explosion in the basement. Well, we ran out of oil and you know, it, it took a couple days to get somebody out there to get us, get us some more oil. So it's freezing in our house. Thank God we had a fire and we're able to at least heat the house a little bit. It wasn't 30 degrees in our house, but if, you have oil and that's gonna be on an older house, make sure that you have appropriate oil levels and better yet, you can even sign up for a service like Sound Oil comes out and now fills up our oil on a regular basis. First I thought, oh, I'll just pay as needed, but I wasn't actually checking it. So that's a good little nugget of wisdom for you if you have an oil furnace. And then insulation, step number six, insulate, attic, crawl space, uh, even your plumbing. If you want to do that, you can wrap your plumbing. The you know, big way that you lose heat in your house is you know, going to be through the attic and the crawl space uh, and through the walls. So if, you're, if you have better insulation, you're going to keep the heat in. It's going to save you on your heating bills, things like that. A lot of houses that are older are actually under insulated to today's standards, and my house is included in that. So this could be something that I apply in my own situation. The, uh, I mentioned the plumbing, so I, I guess I skip, skipped to number seven here. So number eight is to change your ceiling fans onto winter mode. There's a little switch at the top of the ceiling fans. I put ours in, so I remember playing around with that when I was installing those. 
one pushes the air down, one pushes the air up, so make sure you have it on winter mode so you're pushing the warm air down rather than pushing it up and out. Let's see here, okay. Uh, number nine, caulk the exterior. So there's gonna be different joints like around windows and uh, around the doors where you're gonna have or even trim with the siding in the house where you know you might get some cracking in your caulk and in Seattle we get a lot of rain and you don't want to have cracks in your caulk because then you're going to get water coming into those different spots and then that's where the water how the water is going to damage your house and it's interesting because a lot of the damage during inspection reports when I'm working with buyers and we're out looking at houses and the inspectors are pointing out things a lot of the damage is water related and could have been prevented by simply doing things like caulking. So make sure to go around with the tube of caulk, check those different spots. Again, last year, this is a personal story, last year I had, uh, and we'll get to this part too, the roof. There was a little bit too much roof debris and some of my gutters got clogged and water was coming down right over a window. Well, that window didn't have the proper caulking above it and I didn't know that at the time. Found out quickly as water was coming in the, the top of the window. So course you know go out there and do a little emergency uh, first of all roof cleaning but also emergency caulking and both of those things could have been prevented and that's where we'll jump into the next thing make sure you clean your roof if you live near trees so some roofs you're not gonna really have to worry too much about it because maybe you're in a planned neighborhood and there's not a lot of trees near your house if you live in a neighborhood like mine where there's a lot of trees or maybe your backyard like mine has some some tall trees you're going to get tree debris on your roof. So it's advised or wise to get up there and make sure you clean off the roof, and especially before all the big rains and as you know, you've had a lot of debris probably falling on in the fall with some of the wind we've had lately. Get up there, clean it off, and then you can, while you're up there, check. If you have a composition roof, you know, you're gonna be checking to make sure there's no broken or missing shingles, no leak spots. The, once the rains hit, which they already have, but it's just only gonna get worse. Once that situation happens, now you're doing kind of emergency uh, maintenance, which usually costs a little bit more than if you can do it on your own time and on the contractor's own time or the roofer's own time. And another quick story here, last year our microwave stopped working and we didn't know why our microwave wasn't working and it, I mean, it was relatively new. So we swapped it out and got another new one that kind of matched the kitchen. Um, and what's interesting is that microwave, early, late fall, all of a sudden we have water coming down our microwave. Like what the heck is going on? So get up there and we find out that some of the, um, I guess it was tar around our, um, it was one of our vents. The, uh, the vent out of the uh, microwave was failed. So we were getting water coming in the vent down into the microwave and we quickly found out why our microwave didn't work and now our new microwave is not functioning at its best just because it got some water damage. So just, I mean, simple stuff like that. It, it costs you money. I, I had to pay a roofer to come out. I tried to patch it myself multiple times and was failing. So had my roofer come out. It cost a few hundred bucks to have him come out and do that. and you know, buying another microwave. So these are just all little things that if you can catch it before the problem gets big, you're gonna save yourself money and a headache. Another thing, cleaning the gutters. So a lot of homes have a, you know, gutter system at the bottom of the roof. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that's cleaned out so you're not having water pouring off the side of the gutter. And if, if your gutters are clogged, they're not gonna work right and get the water away from the house. So managing your water is another one of those really big things in this area and I would say uh, number 12 is going to be just make sure your downspouts are getting terminating far enough away from your house and a lot of houses that I see as well with people is that the, you know the downspouts just kind of dumping right at the foundation and that's a <laughs> in talking with foundation contractors and with houses where the foundation shifted and sinking a little bit I mean, that's the number one thing they say you can do is make sure to divert water far enough away from your house so it's not just saturating the soil right by the house because you've got this super heavy structure in concrete and if your soil is wet, that's how you're gonna have the sliding and the cracking in the foundation. So make sure that those terminate away. It's an easy fix, but make sure that you have the water terminating away from your foundation. Let's see what else I wrote down here. I wrote, ha, ah, disconnecting your 
water hoses and other um, outdoor water sources. So make sure that your hose, you probably don't need your hose in January. So, you know, water is needed now, but you probably don't even need to water anymore. If you don't, if you're not using it anymore, clean out your hose, put it away in the garage. And if, if it's easy for you, some people can't really do this, but if you can, turn off the water to that outdoor faucet so you're not actually um, getting water out there and that'll keep it from freezing and cracking. Um, and that's what happens with plumbing is if it gets cold and it freezes, now you have expanding and contracting and there's potential risk for damage to the plumbing. So that's a simple thing to just keep the exterior uh, water shut off if you can. Another solution is just to cap the, uh, the faucet on the exterior. Draining hot. Number 14 I wrote down, drain your irrigation system. So if you have a sprinkler system, hire a company, if you live in the Seattle area, somebody like Northern Waters or something like that to come out and clear out the water, shut it off, winterize it so that you're not gonna have, again, freezing, expanding and contracting in those pipes during the winter. Um, it's a bummer and I've seen it where you have you don't clear it, clear it out and winterize it and then come spring, you're kind of hoping and praying it didn't freeze, but it usually does. And then when it does, now you've one or two sprinklers that aren't working right or a, a, break, in the, a break in the sprinkler system. So definitely a worthy investment to preserve your irrigation system. Another fun tip, my wife's a gardener, so I've learned these things from her. Don't prune right now. Now, there's a few exceptions, but don't go crazy with the pruning. It's actually better to prune she tells me this right before springtime because that's when all the growth's gonna happen. So let the plants go dormant for the winter and then prune them towards the end of the winter as we're starting to head into the springtime. That's gonna be your ideal time for most plants. All right, we're almost there. Bear with me, we've got two more. So mow your lawn one more time. If you live in the Seattle area, again, you're not gonna get much lawn growth uh, coming up. So the sun's pretty much not doing much and the grass goes dormant. So get a last mow. The big thing here is, first of all, your grass is gonna look nice for the winter, but also you're gonna be able to drain out the last bit of gas in your lawn mower. So maybe try to toe the line there on how much gas you put in there or just run it, run it dry. But that'll just preserve the, the lawn mower and not get decomposing gasoline in there all winter long. Okay, last one. Clean up and put away your patio furniture. That's it. Pretty simple. So that was a lot to cover, 17 ideas. There's probably more. So if you'd like to, in the comments below, I'd love to hear maybe one or two of these that you're gonna plan on doing this year. And then if there's any that I missed or any that you think are important to add to this list, I'd love to see those down in the comments as well. The big idea here is if you take care of your things and do the routine maintenance on it, you can avoid having bigger problems in the future. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content or found it valuable, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. If you wanna see other content like this on a regular basis, you can actually ring the bell that's right by the subscribe button and that'll actually give you notifications when I put out other videos. And you'll see that I put out videos almost every day on this channel related to real estate, home buying and owning homes in the Seattle area. And I think that you'll find these videos to be valuable.